and I guess it's because I admitted that I had written a poem with the, the word drones in it. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll be on the piano. I went to trip with the piano and Bob. Uh, you can tell me later. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, this is a poem, and I think it's more about something between the drones uh, coming home to roost and. Uh, who said that? Uncle Max? Did you say that? Chicken. Who? Chicken. Chicken. Oh, chickens. It was chickens, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I had a friend who wrote a book in New Zealand titled Saint uh, War Churchill, but we don't talk anymore. <laughs> you know who he is. <clears throat> uh, this is a, a poem that I wrote after uh, Sandy Hook. Mm. You know, it's kind of angry, so you have to take that into consideration. I hope you do anyway. What dogma, Mr. President? What domain, what, excuse me, let me start again. What dogmata are you talking about, Mr. President, of this nation of guns are us? The well-regulated militia gone awry like some stray bullet from a drug deal gone bad? Or that midnight spawn of sweet revenge a la gangster style? Remember the Amish children in school <coughs> lined up like a Chicago Valentine Day massacre? The milkman left no milk. <coughs> Think schools not long ago where the lead sang of a murder? Goodbye, Columbine. Farewell, Virginia Tech. Adios, and are you? Tell me of the slaughter of children since our entry into World War II on December 9, 1941, when war became our mantra, our per perpetual motion machine, the modus operandi and quest for ultimate grail of empire. By the way, what is our national anthem? Another one bites the dust? It's the end of the world as we know it? Gabby knows the Tucson supermarkets aren't safe. Is that Charles Whitman from the University of Texas, Tom? Charlie Manson lives, squeaky. Forget Charlie Company of 1st Battalion, 20th Infantry Regiment, 11th Brigade of the Americal Division, and Milai, March 16, 1968. In God and drones we trust, no matter who dies. Isn't that so, Commander-in-Chief? I heard America's motto, Kill them all, and let God sort them. White phosphorus, napalm, uranium rounds, poor puppies of Fallujah. Robotic soldiers will prevail, no matter how many tours de PTSD. But don't expect the VA to disassemble, and over-medication is too expensive. Though our drug lords will differ with smiles. You can spare me tears, Mr. President, until we are a nation of laws, if it ever happens again. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you for those touching words. Uh, we're going to open it up to questions now. So we're just going to have this really open, I guess, just kind of raise your hand if you have some something and choose out a presenter that you would like to ask a question, and we'll try to move this along.
had a quick statement and then a couple of short questions. Um, John, you're not alone. Uh, you're not the only combat veteran in right now. Um, he touched on something that I don't think anybody else has touched on that I think is a very real aspect of the room. Um, and in thinking about this for the past few days, it's the same thought reoccurs every time. And I'm always brought back to my history lessons with the fire bombing in front of me. Mm. Tens of thousands of civilians killed during those bombs. Battle damage. Through the use of technology, we've been able to turn that down to the one of seven. Not over months, but over years. And I think that's a very real fact that we need to consider. Lateral damage is uh, considered a four letter word. We've got a lot of people in this room. Uh, for John and I, it's a, uh, it's a bad fact of life. And whatever we can do through technology or whatever to keep that number as low as possible is in our mind a good thing. Um, and to my quick questions, I um, would like to ask, what's the alternative? And is a, a matter of international law, how can we uh, subject the United States to the purview of international law while maintaining our own sovereignty? And I think that's a real question. Would anybody like to tackle that one? Thanks, Ed. It was indeed a good question. Mm -hmm. And the question of international sovereignty and how we can maintain our own uh, while we are under, inter, in, you know, if you have an international court, it does not necessarily mean that the international troopers are permitted onto your soil to go grab your leaders and haul them off to the pokey. What it means is that the scrutiny, the opportunity to have the world view that which has happened becomes something that is made available to the rest of the world. The problem that we have with drones or other warfare things is that we keep on developing newer and better technologies. They are great for saving soldiers. They are actually great for reducing the number of deaths that are happening if we are going to have to fight at all. But the questions of international law and of uh, just war law are, is this the least amount we can do to get the job done while inflicting the least amount of damage because every bit of damage that we do to the rest of the world leads the Osamas and those who would follow Osama to further destroy or want to destroy the people who live here and our way of life. So it's a matter of our sa the safety of our civilians that we come back and say, we will subject ourselves to the scrutiny of the world and tell the truth. And that's my answer. I can jump in. Would you like to rebut that? Make a uh, statement. Rebuttal, <laughs> I, I actually just want to provide more information in regards to the question in regards to U.S. sovereignty vis a vis international law, but specifically in regards to the International Criminal Court. Their national criminal court. Um, there are actually a whole array of ways that uh, U.S. leaders, uh, political or military, are um, shielded them from the international criminal court. Uh, and I'll tell you the ways that that's the case. Uh, number one is that there is a principle of complementarity between the international criminal court 
means that if any domestic legal person wants to pursue prosecution on the basis of genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, or starting from 2017 Convention of Religious Aggression, that state's legal system has precedent, has priority, and the International Criminal Court will defer to that national system. And so that the ICC is set up as a state in the UK. Second of all, we have, meaning our government has negotiated staff to force those agreements to the country under that give immunity to our soldiers. <coughs> Third of all, we have signed but not ratified the Rome Treaty, which is the constitutive treaty of the International Criminal Court. As such, uh, the only way we could have our people brought before the International Criminal Court was through referral by the UN Security Council. Well, we are a permanent member with veto power on said Security Council, and that is something else that could prevent American coming tail into the Criminal Court. If we ever decided to sign, uh, I'm sorry, to ratify the Rome Statute, then it would only be future violations of all these rights that could be subject not prior violations. And so, in reality, we have not had a single American defendant in the International Criminal Court uh, in its entire existence as uh, we were active in court on July 17, 2002. Uh, and so, while I understand the concerns that are there, I think there are multiple reasons why it's uh, much of a much of a concern, frankly, in terms of reality and the actuality. If we were to ratify the Rome Statute, um, that would uh, potentially open things up more. Uh, would we see that as a good thing or bad thing? But I just want to give an answer in regard to that difference. I ask that you keep your questions as brief as possible. We're on a limited time here. Uh, Ray, do you think we can go to 9.05, an extra five minutes? Uh, it looks like you gave the go, go ahead. Uh, next. Um, two questions for Under the auspices of which war are we in Pakistan? And can you think of the transparency argument? We can't be transparent on how we're using this to become secret and to tell you what's going on, that we're going to talk to this. Under which, yeah, under the auspices of which war, or war, are we in Pakistan, Somalia, hmm. Yemen, Somalia, well, the, I think the issue is on the line between the population of 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 there is any kind of international rules of the law. And any scholars disagree on that. That's the first question. Second, second uh, question was the argument of we can't be transparent about our targeting or strategy because it can reveal intelligence. Is it not that we were damning or fantastic? Yeah, I guess I, don't, I wouldn't know how to answer that question because that's always, that's always one. Who? Yeah. Oh. I'm just curious. On who would you like that information? Like, would you like it to release to the general public, or are you talking to Congress? Congress. Um. Kind of strategy, and you've spoken to military leaders who fight the war, and you've spoken to the fact this is actually CIA sort of driving mm -hmm. in Obama and the list, and you've spoken to the 
security conflict international law, not being able to understand where our targets 